All right, Jay, so there you had it. You just heard news from the locker rooms. And now to break down the Spurs and Cavs, let's bring in ESPN first take analyst, NBA player Jalen Rose. Jalen, we just listened to the trends. The Spurs tend to give away leads in a series. The Cavs come from behind. But we watched the games. It looks like a mismatch. What kind of chances are you giving the Cavs now that it's going home? Well, the first three quarters, it definitely looked like a championship contending team like the San Antonio Spurs playing against a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers. They really didn't deserve to be there. I mean, to be down 29 points in a finals game is something that doesn't happen every day. But you got to give Cleveland credit. Obviously, Greg Popovich said he did some substitution patterns and things of that nature in the fourth quarter that kind of allowed him back in the game. But also, that's a good teaching point going to Cleveland. So look for the San Antonio Spurs really to come out on the road and try to get going early. What might Cleveland do to stop them? A couple of things. When you're playing at home, you probably want to switch things up a little bit just because the crowd is going to be into it. The first time this team has ever been in the conference finals, they're going to have former players at the game probably. The fans are going to be revved up. The role players are going to play. You might want to start Daniel Gibson at home being a rookie. And because of that, you know, you have more shooting at the beginning of the game. Somebody that could try to stay in front of Tony Parker because Tony Parker's really having his way. Not that Manu Ginobili and Tim Duncan and that big three doesn't do it against everybody, but Tony Parker had a 30-point career high in the final. And this is a guy that's made it to the finals a couple of times. What does he do so well? Why can't they stop him? He's not a secret. The secret is this. People look at Tony Parker and think he's not the best jump shooter. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the most athletic guy. He doesn't dunk. You wouldn't realize that he led the NBA in points in the paint. This guy finds ways to get to the basket. Whether they change angles on a pick and roll, whether he breaks you down in transition, he's always been a tough matchup, and he's really the guy with that ball that allows them to get easy shots. Should they get more physical with him, give a few fouls his way? Well, the game has changed. You want to say be more physical, but the reality of it is if, as long as the guy gets up, goes to the line, knocks down two free throws, that theory goes out of the window. So if you're just the Cleveland Cavaliers, you probably want to play better defense. You want to keep him out of the paint. When you close out to Tony Parker, you want to take the lesser of two evils. You want to make him a jump shooter, not a driver. If he's a driver and a jump shooter, then he'll have a big game like he did the last couple. How can they take Tim Duncan out of the game just a little bit? You can't take Tim Duncan out of the game because he's affects the game in so many ways. Points, rebounds, assists. He had nine rebounds. He had eight assists. He's going to get his blocks. What you want to do is you want to attack him offensively. You want Drew Gooden to post up and go towards the rim. You want Zadruna Silgas to post up and go towards the rim. You want Varejo to get offensive rebounds. You want him to be in foul trouble like he was in the Utah series in game three. If Tim Duncan plays over 35 minutes in game three, then the Cleveland Cavaliers may be in trouble. How about LeBron James? You tell him to keep going to the hole? Keep going. Put your head down. Play like, play like a, a reckless abandon. Play like a bull in a china shop. You're at home. You're going to get some calls. The fans are going to be into it. The officials feel it. The fans feel it. When you, LeBron, come out early and establish yourself and try to get the Cleveland Cavaliers a lead early. If they can get a lead early, that's something they probably can maintain throughout the fourth quarter as opposed to trying to come back in the fourth quarter when really it's too late. All right, so who takes game three? I think Cleveland takes game three, not only because I want more work on this show, <laughs> but I just think that they're coming back home. I think they're going to find a way to respond in front of their home fans. Not that it's all about you. <laughs> all right, if they take game three, does the series return to San Antonio? Well, the key is this. You want to win game three if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers. Why? Because if you lose game three, you're down 0-3 with two games at home, and then it's about Really, do we want to fly back to San Antonio or not? So you want to win game three to establish a 2-1 series and make the world feel like, just like they did in the Detroit series, that they can come back. Will they come back? I predict the San Antonio to win in six from the beginning, so I'm still sticking with that, San Antonio in six. How much do players really feel, I don't want them to celebrate on my home court? Is that cliche or true? That's cliche, but it's true because somewhat, it's somewhat of an, of an embarrassment. This is why. You're the Cleveland Cavaliers. You make it to the finals for the first time ever. It's tremendous. In this buildup, we got LeBron James, we got everything on the floor happening, but then we lose our final game. So the fans really don't know how to respond. They don't know how to say thank you in that situation. You want to at least end on a win. All right, well, we'll find out tomorrow night, ABC, 8 Eastern, Game 3. And that takes us to our poll question today, asking a question I'm not sure Jay's going to like, but we want to know how many games the Cavaliers will win in these finals. Here